afternoon, everyone. Yay, it's on. And welcome to today's Protect Kids Rally here at our beautiful Minnesota State Capitol. The Minnesota Child Protection League has been busy planning for this day for some time. And we're absolutely thrilled that you're all here. What a fabulous turnout and what a glorious day. Yay! Woo! I'm former state representative Cindy Pugh, and it's my great honor to have served as chairwoman for the Protect Kids Rally and to emcee today's special and very important event. We're going to be we're going to begin our Protect Kids Rally today with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation. But before we do that, I'd like to ask all legislators who are here with us today to please come forward. If you could come up here, we would appreciate it. You can wait here at the, top of the, at the top of the stairs, because shortly we would like to recognize you. We're so grateful that you're here. Thank you so much. So at this time, I would like to ask Fremont e. Gross of Deep Haven will be leading us in the pledge, and State Representative Tim Miller, along with his wife, who's joining him here today, to please come forward. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join Fremont as he leads us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic in which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Fremont. I'd now like to welcome Representative Tim Miller to the podium. Here he is, my wonderful former colleague, along with his wife. Tim is going to be offering an invocation for today's rally. Thank you all for coming out here today. But Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Luke 18, verse 16. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of sea. Matthew 18, verse 6. Please pray with me. Please join me in prayer. Most holy God, the one true God, the one who rules over the entire universe. You are called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Nothing and no one escapes your loving kindness, your mercy, and your care. Your son Jesus said, let the little ones come to me for the kingdom of God belongs to them. Father, you have appointed parents to raise their children according to your divine plan. You have gifted teachers intellect and wisdom to guide them in their development into loving, productive citizens of their communities and this great nation. As we stand here today before you, we call on all parents and all teachers to raise and train our children, your children, in righteousness, purity, and justness. Do not allow to prosper those who seek to defame and distort the image of you that you have created in all of us. Confuse their plans and stop them from trying to sexualize our children. Open their eyes so that they may see you, depart from their wicked ways, and turn to you, the giver of truth. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day you have given to us. We thank you for the safety of all in attendance. May you be blessed by the words and actions of everyone here today. In the name of the Savior of all, Jesus Christ, amen. amen.
Thank you, Tam. Once again, I want to welcome and thank each and every one of you, parents, grandparents, students, and concerned citizens, for being here today at our Kids Rally, sponsored by the Child Protection League. We're gathered here this afternoon because we're committed to stopping the harmful materials that comprehensive sex education promoters want your young children and grandchildren exposed to. Friends, silence is no longer an option. The legislature may not be in session today, I assure you, members have been and are hearing your voices loudly and clearly. A comprehensive set mandate on Minnesota schools is unacceptable to the people of this great state as you are demonstrating with boldness today. When the Comprehensive Sex Education Bill, House File 1414, reared its ugly head last session, the Child Protection League mobilized and informed the public that the radical Planned Parenthood was behind it. Not only did the concerned public respond to that call to action, but legislators in the House responded with heroic courage as well. And the proponents of comprehensive sex education were blindsided by what had just hit them. Because you and the Child Protection League remained vigilant and made your presence felt at the committee hearings, the CSC mandate was not included in any House or Senate compromise legislation. Now, as the bill sits barely alive in, its in this current biennium, we the people have been on a march in communities across the state, spreading the word about the grave dangers CSE poses to the well-being of children. And we've made the bill completely radioactive. Thank you. There was a time, and not too long, when adults protected young people from premature graphic sex information and sexual activity because childhood innocence was considered worthy of protection. We believed that children should gain maturity before being exposed to the harsh and crude realities of life. It only takes a moment to rob a child of his or her innocence, and that can never be restored. You cannot unteach or unsee a sexually graphic image. It's burned into a young child's mind and memory forever. CSE is an ideology that aims to demolish every standard of sexual behavior by detaching sexuality from the anchor of morality. Today, Planned Parenthood and radical sex educators are using comprehensive sex ed to destroy the innocence of young children by exposing them to raw graphic sexual behaviors they're simply not prepared to handle, including the teaching of multiple sexual orientations, identities, and acts. As stated on the back of the literature piece, According to the FBI, sexual predators, quote, groom children with pornographic images and explicit sexual instruction to remove natural defenses. We call that criminal, while Planned Parenthood calls that, quote, education, unquote, and says it's perfectly normal. We're, we're here today because all of us want to send a me message to our legislators that we expect them to protect our children from the psychological trauma of exposure to comprehensive sexual education and its forced sexu sexualization of children. This rally, along with the momentum we've built, will continue to build upon right up, to, right up to and through the upcoming 2020 legislative session will deliver the final blow to the CSC mandate. They won't dare touch it with you at the ready. And they know we'll be watching. But friends, please know that we've only just begun. This rally is but the first phase of our strategy to stop CSE, just, not just for now, but for good. 
There must never be a mandate for CSE in Minnesota. I've heard so many as I've been out and about speaking with, with so many. Not with our kids, you won't. You are needed in this war against our precious, innocent children. Boots on the ground in a united army of tenacious, informed citizens required to combat this threat. And make no mistake, this battle will not end with the next legislative session. We know those pushing this agenda will simply re and try again in 2021, if unsuccessful next year. We'll need to remain vigilant to ensure they fail at doing so. Today, you're going to hear from several speakers who are on the front lines fighting the cultural assault on our children. But before we introduce our speakers, I'd like to recognize each of the legislators, many of whom I've had the great privilege of serving in the Minnesota House, who chose to stand with us today. We're so very grateful that each and every one of you are also, um, I'd like to make mention and express appreciation for um, a number of other, um, others that are in our presence today. I would like to acknowledge that U.S. Senate candidate Jason Lewis is here. I don't know where Jason is right now, but I would, yes, very good. But I would like to personally thank Jason for being here and engaged in this fight with us. And I also understand that U.S. 3rd Congressional District, Kendall Qualls, is here with us. And I would like to acknowledge his presence as well. Thank you, gentlemen. So I would now like to honor and express appreciation for our legislators, beginning with Representative Greg Bowe. Just, if you could just give a wave. Um, Representative Brian Daniels. Rep Representative Detmer. Representative Sandra Erickson. Representative Steve Green. Representative Glenn Grunhagen. Representative Eric Lucero. Representative Shane Mickland. Representative Kristen Robbins. Representative Peggy Scott. Representative Tim Miller. And Representative J Jeremy Munson. And Representative Last but not least, Bob Detmer. We also have a number of senators here with us, which is wonderful. Representative Bruce Anderson, Senator Bruce Anderson. Senator Roger Chamberlain. And Senator And I see Senator Andrew Math Matthews, thank you. And Senator Jeff Howe, my former House colleague, and Senator Mark Coran. Thank you so much, and you can join the crowd or you can stay here, whatever your preference. We just so appreciate your being here. So now I'm pleased to introduce our speaker. Third term state representative Eric Lucero from Dayton, Minnesota gave an impassioned testimony on the House floor in April that unmasked the comprehensive sex education curriculum. It's perfectly normal. Versions of that video clip have been viewed well over one million times. <laughs> Eric serves on the higher education, judiciary, and public safety committees in the Minnesota House. Please join me in welcoming Eric. Well, thank you. 
Thank you, everybody. It's so good to see so many friendly faces today. What a great turnout from all across the state on this very important topic. To start off, though, I have to say, uh, there's been so many friendly remarks and words of encouragement and thank yous, but the fact is, I, as, long, as well as uh, my colleagues in the House and Senate, as well as the, uh, the great ladies at Child Protection League, we are all acting on behalf of the Lord. We are conduits, conduits, allowing the Lord to work through us. So the fact is, glory goes to the Lord for the work that he's doing. And it's a privilege, it's a privilege when he taps us on the shoulder and asks us to be a participant in the plan and the work that he's doing. And again, just to double down on the Child Protection League for their great efforts, the research, in the days leading up to this, this terrible legislation when it came to the floor, empowering us legislators with the information that we need, and then the great work of organizing to bring all of us out here today. So let's give them a round of applause as well. Unfortunately, Democrats, politicians, unelected bureaucrats are on a rampage to eliminate parental authority over our own children. We see this in multiple areas. To eliminate parental values and replace with government values, to harvest our children's private data so they can data mine and build profiles, to eliminate parental decisions over our children's own health care, to erode religious liberty, to create gender confusion and teach gender fluidity, to allow school-age boys to shower with girls. Friends, evil forces are at work to corrupt the minds of our children. As was uh, mentioned by Cindy Pugh this past session, Democrats brought forth the legislation to mandate comprehensive sex education. This mandate would include sexual development, relationships involving diverse sexual orientations and gender identities, the relationship between substance use and sexual behavior. The mandate would include the age groups of elementary and secondary school students. Yeah, exactly. We know the long history that Democrats have been fighting to ensure that anybody, any teacher in the classroom is a union member and licensed. But now when it comes to this perverse agenda, they made an exception. Teaching persons without a teaching license would be allowed to instruct children. Democrats specified the type of organizations that would be granted access to our children that weren't, the, the, the organizations that were not licensed would include community organizations that had necessary content expertise. Well, who is that? Planned Parenthood. Pla who? On Planned Parenthood's own website, they boast being the largest provider of comprehensive sex education in Minnesota. As a community organization, Planned Parenthood praises the comprehensive sex education of Democrats that are mandating with near verbatim language that's in the Democrat bill. It's almost as if Planned Parenthood wrote the bill. Among the material, the sex material Planned Parenthood endorses is the book, It's Perfectly Normal. Unfortunately, my colleague, State Representative Peggy Bennett, is unable to be with us due to an illness. But during the floor debate, she brought that book. And I see it under the podium here, so I presume somebody's gonna hold it up. But she brought that book. And she had the courage to begin speaking about that, so our prayers are with Peggy Bennett as she recovers. But in this book that Planned Parenthood endorses, as part of the material they want to give and put in front of our children, the book includes graphic cartoon pictures of teenage sex, oral sex, anal sex, masturbation, 
teaching multiple sexual orientations, homosexuality, and gender, I gender identity fluidity as all being perfectly normal. It introduces young children to abortion. On Planned Parenthood's website, their philosophy includes, quote, some people feel neither male nor female. These people may choose labels such as gender queer, gender variant, or gender fluid, unquote. The feelings about gender identity, according to them, can begin as early as two or three. Their true agenda, the true agenda of this is insidious, sick legislation is sexual indoctrination and sexual grooming of our young children. The truth is, our children are a gift from the Lord. Each and every one of us is committed to continuing to fight for the truth, to empower parents to protect our children. Friends, do we want government values? No. Do we want politicians and bureaucrats telling us how to raise our children? What do we say to Speaker of the House, Melissa Hortman? What do we say to Majority Leader Ryan Winkler? What do we say to Governor Tim Waltz? What do we say to Senator Amy Klobuchar? And what do we say to former Planned Parenthood Executive Senator Tina Smith? We will keep fighting for the future of our children. Thank you, everybody. So I'm not sure who I'm supposed to be introducing. Sydney coming back? Okay. Thank you so much, Representative Eric Lucero. He's just been a warrior, a champion for kids. So as uh, Re Representative Peggy Bennett was going to be our next speaker today, but is ill, and as a result, she'll not be able to join us, and she sent her honest, heartfelt report. Um, I would like to share that third term state representative, Peggy Bennett, from Albert Lee, Minnesota, the former teacher, and was the author of an amendment to remove the comprehensive education mandate from the education bill which was critical. That amendment sparked a heated, hours-long debate. Representative on the Education Committee, as well as the Education Finance Division, we greatly appreciate her work on this issue. Assurance that she will fight this again next year, just as she did this year. Thank you to Representative Peggy Bennett. Representing the Senate, our next speaker is Senator Andrew Matthews. Senator Matthews, Senate District 15, has stated that he will always be a staunch supporter of life from conception. He also understands how defending kids from CSE is of the utmost importance because CSE is the doorway to abortion promotion and training in the schools by unlicensed Planned Parenthood teachers. Senator Matthews will read a statement from Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka, who is not able to be with us today. Welcome, Senator Matthews. Good morning, my fellow Minnesotans. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for coming out here today, because this is an important issue. This is an important issue to stand up and fight for our families, fight for our children, and fight for our communities. And we wanted to show you that you have a large team of supporters at the legislators 
who have your back. Now, I'm glad that I grew up uh, free from liberal indoctrination, from the good family that the Lord gave to me, and it's and I use that as an example to other young people to show, hey, you don't need to believe what Hollywood and the media wants to feed you on a daily basis. I'm here to challenge our young people. If you're a school-aged boy or girl that's here with us today, stand up for what's right. Stand up for truth. Stand up in your classrooms and your families. We need more young leaders like you out here. I'm also glad to be able to read to you what Sen our Senate Majority Leader, Senator Paul Gazelka, wants to pass on to you today as well. He says, thank you for coming to your capital today to make your voices heard. This is your grounds, this is your conversation, and by making the choice to show up, you are influencing the future. I believe that little goes right when there is significant government involvement, and this is especially the case when it comes to education surrounding sensitive topics for our youth. Bottom line, without equivocation, this bill will not pass as long as I am your majority leader. For youth, this is a conversation that largely belongs out of the public school system and instead in the home or with trusted adults. It's always easier to stand up for what's right when we feel the support of families across Minnesota, so please keep the pressure on. No group of people has ever won by staying silent. Contact your elected officials. Make sure they know where you stand. If we make our voices heard, I believe we can and will win. That's from Senator Paul Gazelka. Thank you again, everyone. You referenced the importance of the elections because as long as you have a strong majority in the Senate, we'll have a plug to stop bad legislation like this going down the drain. So help us fight in the next election to keep a strong majority for families. Thank you to Senator Matthews, that was just fantastic. Before we break into a quick commercial break at this time, I wanted to make mention that I noticed one of my former colleagues, wonderful Representative Mary Franson is here and I wanted to give a shout out and express appreciation from Alexandria. Thank you, Mary. So we're gonna take a few commercial breaks and the first, um, I'd like to encourage you all to take as many pictures as you can and to, of this rally today and to please post them on social media. We've got to create our own firestorm. I have a feeling that our uh, mainstream media is not going to do that for us. So please take out your cell phones right now and maybe take a picture of a rally, a great rally sign. I'm looking and see so many. Um, and then post them on your social media, please, with using hashtags Protect Kids Rally, Stop Hurting Kids Now, Stop CSE, and No Porn in Schools. So thank you so much for giving us visibility to this critical issue for stopping CSE and protecting kids. So our next speaker this afternoon is Noah Maldonado. Duluth native Noah is the Northern Regional Coordinator for Students for Life, forming students in schools across North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. He has a message for parents and kids about comprehensive, quote unquote, sex ed. Please join me in welcoming Noah. Pleasure to be here today. Thank you all for coming out. 
Uh, my name is Noah Maldonado, and I am the Northern Regional Coordinator for Students for Life of America. And I am a proud member of the pro-life generation. <laughs> Students for Life has 100 student pro-life clubs across all 50 states, and I am here to represent over 40 pro-life student groups at high schools and colleges across the state of Minnesota. As a former Minnesota public school student and advocate for teens and young adults, Students for Life, I cannot, ex I cannot stress enough the importance of opposing measures to make comprehensive sex education state mandated in Minnesota schools. This is an abortion industry talking point that will push sexualization of children and abortion propaganda on our students. I have the privilege of serving students across three states for Students for Life, and I've personally seen what the impact of pro-abortion curriculum has made on young adults. This abortion curriculum leads vulnerable students to violent actions that are harmful to women and creates a campus culture that is hostile to pre-born children, pregnant mothers, and the students that advocate for them. <laughs> students for Life promotes real, helpful, to empower women and students to stand for the, for the scientific undeniable truth that human life deserves to be protected at all stages of development. <laughs> Comprehensive sex education is dangerous for students. This legislation allows groups that promote bondage, sadism, pornography, abortion, and other degrading practices to take over the sex ed in Minnesota and expose youth as young as 10 years old to scandalizing depictions of sexual relationships and abortion. Under the guise of medically accurate and age appropriate, these groups want to take sex ed out of the hands of parents and where decisions can best be made and mandate a one-size-fits-all solution with comprehensive sex education. Now, I have the bill HF 1414 right here on the podium with me. And in section one, subdivision one of this bill, it states that the model program must include medically accurate instruction that is age and development, developmentally appropriate on consent, bodily autonomy, and healthy relationships, including relationships involving diverse sexual orientations and gender identities. Make no mistake when I highlight that this bill mandates instruction on bodily autonomy to children and adolescents. This euphemism to abortion in the plain text of the bill is a clear sign of the direction of these mandated comprehensive sex education models that will be forced upon our school districts and our children. This legislation indicated that students will be taught about access to abortion or the intentional destruction of a preborn child in the womb. Furthermore, in section one, subdivision one of HF 1414, students will be taught about abstinence and other methods of preventing unintended pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections. This is another way that the abortion industry hides their agenda in our legislature, in our schools, and in our communities. Abortion does not prevent unintended pregnancy. It kills the child who already existed from the first moment of conception. Now in section one, subdivision two of HF 1414, it states, notwithstanding any law to the contrary, instruction in a sexual, uh, sexual health education program under this section may be provided by a person without a teaching license who is employed by the school district charter school or community organization if the school administration determines the school employee or community organization has necessary content expertise. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how Planned Parenthood and other abortion corporations intend to legally infiltrate our schools to inculcate pro-abortion values in our children and make lifelong customers and advocates of their abortion. Department of Health, last year alone, Planned Parenthood and other abortion centers across Minnesota ended the lives of 9,910 pre-born children in this state. Sex ed needs to remain local, in the hands of parents and school boards, and not something that is mandated by the state and influenced by groups like Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry.
So let's protect our kids. Stand for truth, science, and human rights. Let's stop comprehensive sex education and keep the abortion industry out of our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. That was just, just fantastic. Our next speaker will address, um, our next speaker addressing our rally is Reverend Brian Walker. Reverend Walker, Reverend Walker and his wife Denise, who I don't think is here with you today, um, were like many other African American young adults who believed the lie that abortion on demand all, all their problems. After attending abortion support groups, God healed their fractured and devastated lives from abortion, called by God to pastoral ministry. Through their rich in mercy abortion and miscarriage recovery program and everlasting love marriage enrichment course, they present the hope, forgiveness, and mercy that Jesus Christ gave to them. Currently, Brian is the program director of Life Action Ministries, where he develops and maintains relationships and coordinates the 40 Days for Life prayer vigil. Let's welcome Brian at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm a pastor, I can say praise the Lord. Amen. Let's wake it up here. Uh, thank you for uh, all the work that you folks have been doing. I'm also the program director at Pro-Life Action Ministries, as she mentioned. We're on the front lines in front of P&P, anyway, trying to dissuade women and men from killing their own flesh and blood like my wife and I did over 40 years ago. Make no mistake, abortion is the flip side of this type of curriculum. They're the flip side of the same coin. They're trying to sexualize, get them in the funnel for an abortion years later. That's what they're after. They're trying to get our kids away. Many years ago, I was a substitute teacher, a licensed short call substitute teacher. And I taught in the schools in Minneapolis, all around the different schools. And one day I subbed at a high school. I heard it was a sex ed class. And I said, yes, I have a personal interest in this. I have a personal testimony about this. I'm not gonna let this presenter just get her side of the story. She came to the YWCA, former Planned Parenthood volunteer, and she had what I call the condom show, which is pretty much what it was. Safe sex, no values, no uh, parental consent, you have your own bodily autonomy, and guess what, that was 11 years ago. 11 years ago. This stuff has been in the schools for quite some time, and we finally caught up with it. But what I want to let you know, because of the <coughs> work that we can do, and also by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can remain vigilant. We can also be here for the long course. This is going to take some time. These folks have been mapping this out for, for decades. Anybody ever heard of the book, After the Ball? Read it. After the Ball has put this thing out decades ago. This is their game plan. This is their, uh, this is their playbook. It has been in place for quite some time. Also, I'm here today to encourage you. This is not over. This will never be over until the Planned Parents of the world get totally defunded. They lost. They left $60 million on the table. $60 million on the table. How about that? Why does somebody leave $60 million on the table? That's because abortion is your business. You will walk away from $60 million to sexualize our children, to kill women and children in the womb, and that's what your business plan is. So what do we do about it? One, we continue to pray, because this thing has to proceed with prayer, in the middle prayer, and it's gotta end with prayer. Also, be aware of what's happening. Come to more rallies like this. I hope this is the last one, but it may not be. I've been sidewalk counseling for 11 years. I'm out here in the cold, 52 below, 100 THI. There's no reason we can't come out to more rallies like this if necessary. Pray for our civic leaders. Yes, even pray for the governor. 
First Timothy 2, 1 through 4 admonishes us to pray for our civic leaders so we can live in peace. Go to your school board meetings. Your taxes go there. Why don't you go there? Buy all the money. Go to your school board meetings. Get your children to opt out of these devilish, wicked, uh, comprehensive sex ed plans. You can do it. Write a letter to your governor. Send an email. Flood the phone lines. Do what you know to do. Write an op-ed piece to your paper. Also be prepared to lie, be lied about, slandered. Uh, also to be threatened for the sake of righteousness for our kids. These folks are not playing. And we're not to be, we should not be playing either. I want to end with this, that we have to say to the legislature, to the Planned Parents of the world, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Our children are too valuable. God bless you. God bless the state of Minnesota. God bless America. Thank you, Reverend Walker. That was just fantastic. It's time for another brief commercial break. And I would like to start. It's so fun to look around. I can see that some of you have come from a long ways away. I'm wondering how many might be here today that came here on a bus. Raise your hand. Woo! We've got some people that came a long ways, and I know that. And how many of you didn't come alone? You brought a friend or a neighbor or a family member. Yes! Thank you so much for having done that. So who wants to stay connected and not miss a word of the next call to action from the Minnesota Child Protection League? You can sign up on our website at www.protectkidsrally.com or if you see a volunteer walking around with a clipboard and wearing one of our great red t-shirts. See Kelly holding one up here. Simply sign the petition and let legislators know that you do not want CSE in our schools. And we'll make sure you're not only connected, but you're in the know as well. thrilled to introduce you to my friend and fellow freedom fighter, Tamara Scott, here today with us all the way from Iowa. Tamara serves as the Republican National Committee woman for Iowa. Tamara is also the state director for the Phyllis Schlafly Eagles Constitution Center, state director for Concerned Women for America. Legislative Director for the Iowa Faith and Freedom Coalition and host of Truth of Our Time talk show. Tamara has joined several state governors in arenas across the nation, leading thousands in prayer for our country. Wow, what a bio. What a blessing to have her here with us today. Tamara resides in the Des Moines area with her husband Lowell and considers raising God-honoring children of integrity, enjoying time with them and their families to be her most important role. Please join me in offering a warm Minnesota welcome for Tamara. First, I want to just thank all of you for being here. I am so thrilled to see this crowd. And I want you to know they see you too. Do not think that your time here is not important. And don't think that it ends here today either. I am so honored to be with you today. I've grown very fond of my friends at CPL Action. You have quite a blessing in this group here in Minnesota because they help us across the nation. I'm going to talk to you today as a mom, as a grandma, as a citizen. We've allowed too much to be taken from us, and it's time we take it back. I want you to understand what we're dealing with. This is not somebody who's worried about my morals or somebody who's just worried about uh, you know, values and old-fashioned 
Your children are being systematically exploited. Comprehensive sex education might as well be called calculated sexual exploitation. Colleges are now recommending four-year-olds engage in sexual activity and role-playing. Sixth graders in Washington State were asked as a class if any of them would question their identity. You've seen the explosion of kids, kids with gender confusion and dysphoria. This didn't just happen. It's not in our water. It didn't come in a recalled item from the store. This is coming through your schools directly to your children. It strikes me curious that parents will spend large amounts of money on car seats, baby cribs, safety items for their kids, and then send them into the halls to be poisoned. It's not just that they're seeing images. Someone mentioned that these are marred in their brains. We now have studies that show pornography changes and alters the brain. It takes the volume out of the brain. It can lower, it, we know depression and anxiety, drug use, alcohol. We know it preps young ladies to become victims. And beyond that, you hear all this discussion right now amongst your politicians and amongst the left talking about division and hate and how we need to be friendly and get along. Do you know that people who view pornography out of 22 studies, I think in five or seven countries, they are more likely to be verbally aggressive, physically aggressive from viewing pornography? If the left wants us to get along, let's start by doing what we know makes common sense and not giving our kids filth that infiltrates their brain. The FBI will tell you this is what they do to groom children, to be trafficked. You know in your schools, we have high numbers of teachers now molesting students. Your children are being prepped to be somebody else's victim. There are several reasons why. Because when society, when the family is strong, society benefits. When the family is broken, society pays the cost. And there are those out there who want to destroy the very fabric of our nation, what's made us great as America, and the family is a great way to do it. And poisoning and tainting kids is an easy vehicle for schools. They've now uh, institutionalized sex ed. How many of you are familiar with Common Core? Thank you. That's the one time I enjoy being booed when I mention the Common Core. Now you're hearing about social emotional learning, where they're going to come in and analyze your student, track your student on things like mindsets and values and beliefs, and if your student doesn't go along with the latest fad of same-sex marriage, a homosexuality, genderism, whatever it is, they will have the ability to label your student, to withhold them from class, to change their career direction. We know sixth graders were shamed when they didn't accept their teacher's same-sex marriage. You need to understand, your kids don't tell you what they're most afraid of. They don't come home and say what scared them the most at school. Don't think that even though you're there and you're a good parent, you know what's happening. I went to the classroom. I asked what was going to happen in my child's classroom. Told how, I was told how great it was going to be. Well, I also wrote for the newspaper at the time, and I had parents start calling me about the quiz that came out in my, my son's class. Let me just see if I can find a couple questions. These are fourth and fifth graders 25 years ago. If a girl's been sexually abused, it's okay to call her a whore. Girls ought to expect to get their bras snapped when they first start wearing them. Girls like to be teased, especially about their bodies. And boys like to be teased in a sexual way. What ideas do you think that placed in the heads of fourth and fifth graders? And then we wonder why we have kids who are now being called to the, pres the principal's office for harassment. We just taught them how. It doesn't end there. We in Iowa, we're dealing with comprehensive sex ed. We had a wonderful state legislator, Representative Sandy Salmon, figured out this was our year to get rid of Planned Parenthood as our sex ed contractor. 
we did it, and the court's now telling us we have to pay them anyway. Here's what I think. If that's the case, I say we take it out of the judiciary budget. We have Planned Parenthood just like you. Wise Iowa Project. It is their work to institutionalize sex ed, and they are doing it around parents, on social media. The Common Core is the way they got it into the schools. And now by labeling your children, that's the way they're getting you to follow along as well because parents are worried about scholarships. 43 states have loopholes that allow pornography in the classroom. When that happened to my student 25 years ago, I called the school and they would not tell me where this came from, what class it had been, and I finally said, if I come to the playground and I start asking these same questions to your students, will you have me removed? Absolutely. Will you have me arrested? Most possibly. I said, then you tell me what teacher I need to press charges against. <laughs> we finally got attention. We had a school board overhaul that year. And I won't tell you, absolutely. And I won't tell you everything's okay, but we are working on it and it's a process. And Cindy's right, we're not gonna leave here today and have it okay. Your next session's not going to correct it. This is an ongoing battle because as Christians, we're told to take a day of rest, right? Satan never takes a day off. And this curriculum is from the pits of hell. They know that they can mess with your kids. You are hearing talk about mental health, right? Do not let the school get involved in mental health. Listen, they started teaching sex and now your kids don't even know what sex they are. Do not let them anywhere near your child's mental health. It will be dangerous for every conservative out there, every Christian out there. And they are not equipped, nor do they have the time or the ability. We know why kids are frustrated. We're hearing sexual intercourse without affection. It brings them to cause frustrations, mental anxiety, depression, um, teens with alcohol, drug use, suicide. That's why we're dealing with these issues. We don't need more mental health training. We need less sex ed violations. We took God out. We removed the spiritual virtue and now we have sexual violence and they're scratching their heads why. Our kids are being irreparably violated, their innocence stolen, they're being mentally molested, emotionally manipulated, sexually exploited. They can't adequately verbalize why, but it's because they're being spiritually tormented. They know what they're hearing doesn't fit with the creator who designed them to be what he gave them as far as a gender and a sex. I'm gonna say this to you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You warm my heart. It was worth my four hour drive to see this group. Do not leave here and think that your work is done. And if you're wondering what you can do, God has given each and every one of you a gift. Find out what yours is in this battle and use it. Thank God for the legislators who are here. For all your other legislators, they are just like your children. They behave better when they know adults are watching. So I implore you, engage. Start talking to your friends and your neighbors. And if you think I am only one, what can one do? Have you ever been in the tent with a mosquito? One can make quite a difference, but look around you. You are not one. The Bible says we're two or more gathered in my name. I will hear your prayer.
They have systemized sex ed, and they've weaponized you as a parent. If you dare speak out against it, they use your words against you, they call you intolerant, they call you homophobic. Do not let that frighten you. Do not live in fear. Stand on the God of your founding fathers. He promises us that if we have a remnant, he is with us. And we start today with CPL action. And we're not giving up until we take this nation back and every child is safe and can have a healthy education without being violated when they walk through the school doors. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Tamara. What a powerful message. We're so blessed you're here. So I'm very pleased to introduce all of you to another friend and a subject matter expert on so many issues of significance, Ann Taylor. Ann has been actively engaged in advocacy for children. Her work includes the increasingly destructive federal education mandates within Common Core and the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. She has engaged in opposition to the massive data collection, manipulation involved in social and emotional learning, which we just heard about, and student surveys. And student surveys. She's an advocate for protecting parental rights and for the growing opt-out movement from intrusive standardized testing, from the planned parenthood pre-K through 12 comprehensive sex education curriculum. Anne is involved with and a valued member of both Minnesota Advocates and Champions for Children, MAC, M-A-C-C, and the Child Protection League. How fortunate we are to have Anne on our team and addressing us today. Please join me in welcoming Anne. Thank you, Cindy. What both an honor it is to be here and a bit sobering for the reasons that bring people like you and I together here today. My story begins with the voice of advocacy that began in 2011 with the first release of my post-abortion testimony. <coughs> like some of us here today, I too had a challenging childhood, where as I got into my young adult years, it was easy to excuse some of my life decisions. Some by choice, others were not. And because of those experiences, and the, with the help of God leading and encouraging me, I allowed myself to follow his call. That is, my friends, what has led me to do what is right, to advocate for what is good, and what is best for the children in our society in the state of Minnesota. Now, I can speak of Planned Parenthood because my first abortion took place at one of those facilities. It was actually in Arizona. I can speak to the harm it inflicted in my body physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and how it affects the entire family. For those of you that don't already know, the Planned Parenthood that's just down the way here from our state capitol is the third largest Planned Parenthood facility in the United States of America. And accounts for the majority of abortions here and across several neighboring states. Let me ask you this. Do we want them in our schools? No. A little louder. Guess what? They already are. Comprehensive sex education is only going to further it. In 2013, 
Common Core created the National Sexual Ali It's a long word, right? National Sexual Education Standards where Planned Parenthood frequently undid the underwriting of the standards themselves, but they aren't the only players. Let me put it to you this way. To talk about Common Core, which is still in place, by the way, we now have Every Student Succeeds Act, SEL, Equity, you name it. It's still in place. If you talk about Common Core, you got to talk about Bill Gates. You've got to talk about the deep pockets of standardized testing, of data collection, the nefarious, intrusive surveys that are inflicted on our children without parental consent while lowering the education bar, infiltrating our schools, both public and private, having nothing to do with education. Similarly, to speak of sex education in our schools would be like leaving out Planned Parenthood. But for now, I'm going to switch gears. We're going to talk about something that's going on in our public libraries, which you and I pay for. For two consecutive years, Drag Queen Storytime has taken place just over here in St. Paul at their public library. And ironically, Ironically, our library has joined forces with Twin City Community of Drag Performers and has also worked with the library for the last two years. Shockingly, they do not vet the drag queens. If you or I were to enter our child's school, whether to volunteer or help in the lunchroom or any capacity whatsoever, we are subject to a full background check. My friends, this is a safety issue, and one where we need to challenge those who are voted into office, as well as those hired in authority, and ask, who are these people? And why? Why do they get clearance? We've heard stories in other states where drag performers were at these libraries and convicted child perpetrators. This is not to say that all drag queens are convicted pedophiles, but they do often moonlight in the adult entertainment industry and some running prostitution rings. Should they be around our children in a public library? Hennepin County also revealed that drag performers are not reading books like The Fuzzy Little Caterpillar or Curious George. They're reading supposed high quality literature based on a mix of acceptance and difference that includes gender, transgenderism, only confusing our young children. Folks, this is a nationally orchestrated grooming movement, normalizing pedophilia. And it's happening on your dime. Like Common Core, like Planned Parenthood, we need to challenge those deep pockets because it was also revealed that this funding is not only on your dime, but also comes through private donors. I suggest an official investigation be done. <laughs> to continue to create public awareness, take action through mass resistance, and boy, do we need to pray. And I'll tell you what, something else I was reminded of this morning at my home parish. Everyone can use prayer. It aren't just the ones, not just you guys, not our legislators, everyone standing before, before us and behind us today. There are those in opposition that need prayer the most. Yes. Pray for a serious, serious change of heart and to do what is right and just in the eyes of God, which includes 
keeping all of our children free from harm. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. We're going to take another quick commercial break, and this time I want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to all of our wonderful volunteers who planned the rally and to everyone who helped spread the word door to door, door knocking, making phone calls, sharing the handouts on social media, at church, at work, and with your family and friends. And I know that this includes many of you. Thank you so much. Let's just give, give yourselves a round of applause. I know most of you didn't come here alone. <laughs> Friends, today is just the beginning. Everyone in Minnesota must be informed about the assault of comprehensive sex education and the assault that it is and families. We will not abandon our children and expose them to this attack. We have a whole lot more handouts here. Can you get them out to your neighbors, your communities, your churches, your families, and to parent groups throughout the community? Some people have taken them door to door in areas they know. So others have handed them out to unsuspecting moms and grandparents at their local grocery store. Let's do this. Every person must know about the threat of comprehensive sex ed. If you want to take more handouts, either visit our table or you can get some from our volunteers wearing the red shirts. So here are some other ideas. You could take out an ad in your local paper. You could write a letter to the editor. I don't know. Really great letters to the editor that I've seen and I'm so grateful every time I, I read one that takes work to do. I have to warn you, and I'm sure you won't be surprised, that the media is not allowing our flyers to be publicly posted because the words are too graphic. So graphic that the media will not state or publish them in the public. Quote unquote, it's perfectly normal and age appropriate for 10 year olds, not. Friends, the handouts that we have printed are tame compared to what our children are getting in the comprehensive sex ed curriculum, yet adults are not allowed to see them. This is outrageous, and this is, but this is the reality that we're facing. So our next speaker is Jeff Flicker. Jeff is a field representative with Turning Point USA, Minnesota. His goal is to educate high school and college students on the key conservative values of fiscal responsibility, limited government, and America being the best country on earth. He's here today to tell us about his connection with someone you may have recently seen on the Mark Levin Show, Jocko Boyens. Please join me in welcoming Jeff. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Flicker, as she mentioned. Um, I'm the field director for Minnesota with Turning Point USA, um, an organization that believes in limited government, free markets, and loving America and the freedoms that God has granted us. Yeah. It's amazing to see the representation of all of you out here today fighting against this disgusting bill that they're trying to pass through. Um, today we're making a stand that government has no place pushing this secular and one-sided education on our children. As a good friend of mine, Yaku Boyens, mentioned, good does not fight enough, okay? That is what all of you are doing here today, standing up for what is right and what is moral. I just really applaud that, thank you so much. Yaku has spent his life fighting for safety and real empowerment of women in our country, not the falsehood of modern feminism. He has appeared on Fox News multiple times, trained our FBI and CIA agents on how to fight child sex trafficking, and as a brother to his sister who is sex trafficked, he has key insight on how to identify, help the victims, and stand up to this evil. 
He will be here in the Twin Cities speaking on October 15th at the University of Minnesota in Ralph Rapson Hall, room number 45. Okay, and October 16th at Bethel University in the underground. Both events are at 7 p.m. The events are free and I encourage students of high school and college age to attend. Adults can attend as well. Um, but I want you to check our Facebook page at the University or Turning Point USA at the University of Minnesota dash Twin Cities for more updates. Thank you all and God bless you all. Our keynote speaker for today's Protect Kids rally will be Karen England. Karen is the executive director of Capital Resources Institute in California and has traveled all this way, all that way to be here with us today. Karen has firsthand experience with comprehensive sex education and, is actu and what it actually looks like once it becomes law. California has already passed a law very similar to Minnesota's House File 1414. We know what the words, to note the words comprehensive, quote unquote, age appropriate, quote unquote, and medically accurate really mean in CSE classrooms, we're all gonna wanna pay close attention to all that Karen has to share with us today. She's also sounded the alarm about CSE for social change. Please join me in offering a warm Minnesota welcome to Karen England. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I am so impressed with this crowd. I travel the nation doing comprehensive sex ed. And this is a huge crowd on a Sunday afternoon. So thank you. That was my phone. Can you all hold your, hold your signs up? I want to take a picture. That wasn't very graceful, but go ahead. Awesome. Okay, as they mentioned, I'm from California, so let me apologize right away. What happens in California doesn't stay in California, and that is true with comprehensive sex education. If there was ever a time a call to arms, now is the time. Back in 2015, we passed comprehensive sex education in the state of California, and if you pay attention to the news, you're starting to see what is happening as they implement it, because the local school districts are forced to implement it. Parents are up in arms, but it's the law, and that's what they wanna do here in Minnesota. Organizations like Planned Parenthood, other promoters of Sex have been busy writing curriculum, busy writing the standards that, that aren't real, they're just made up standards from the people who love to teach kids about sex, and they are pushing this on our kids. One of the speakers earlier mentioned it's probably going on in your district. You're gonna hear a call to action, but it is going on in school districts, even without the law being passed because you have activists who are going to the school districts enforcing it. This is happening in Nevada, this is happening in Virginia. Uh, in California, you heard the story about the little boy who came out as a girl in the kindergarten class after they read the book I Am Jazz. This is happening around the nation and Minnesota is not exempt. Sex education has become something way different than what we had when we were growing up. It's about teaching kids, and this is because of Planned Parenthood, about their sexual rights and how they have sexual rights and need to exercise them. Now, I don't know about you, but our four kids didn't have a lot of sexual rights or other rights under the age of 18 in our home. And we raised them um, according to our values, and we certainly didn't expect the school or think the school was gonna undermine everything we were teaching our kids, but they are. And that's why stopping this bill, and when it returns again, is so important. You need to stay engaged in this battle, because I guarantee you, Planned Parenthood is going to stay engaged. So as I mentioned, the districts around the nation, they're acquiring curriculum. They're, um, you know, some of them are writing it, but 
But one thing I've noticed when they're writing the curriculum, it's just a reprint of the curriculum that's out there. So there's nothing new. I've gone through every piece of curriculum that's approved by the state of California, read them all, San Francisco to San Diego, and I have to tell you, it's all just a rewrite. And I have no doubt that Minnesota's model curriculum will be a rewrite of everything I'm about to read to you today. So, if you have kids, cover their ears, because here we go. I'm gonna do some reading. Um, so, in my opinion, sexual health education has become nothing more than a way for Planned Parenthood, the sexual rights activists, to promote exploration of various sexual activities. And that includes, and you're gonna hear this a lot as I read from K through 12 curriculum, including ooh, oral and anal sex, I'll say it again. Uh, yes, ooh. So both the content and the method of teaching is designed to desensitize our kids, lower their inhibitions, and teach them about sexual acts while violating their innocence, their modesty, and their privacy. It's nothing short of grooming. Planned Parenthood is the nation's largest provider of sex education with 1.5 million people a year. Yes, big boo. But in Minnesota, they're so proud of it. It's all over their website. I'm reading directly from Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is the largest provider of comprehensive sex education in Minnesota. What is wrong with that picture that they are the number one provider of sex education? Something is already wrong. Going on, this is directly from Planned Parenthood. And, and I wanna say, we had some protesters earlier I am happy to stay after and have you refute anything that I am saying because it is the truth and it's the truth they don't want you to know. But I'm happy to stay if the protesters want to stay and have a conversation about the truth about this and I encourage them to stay and point out to me anything that hasn't been accurate that has been set up here today. So anyway, continuing on with what Planned Parenthood themselves say in Minnesota, Planned Parenthood reaches nearly 50,000 Minnesotans across the lifespan. This is the good part. Including young people in elementary, middle, and high school. Why are they the largest provider of sex ed in elementary school? I think they should be renamed Planned Profits. Comprehensive sex ed has become nothing but a way to acquire younger and newer customers for Planned Parenthood. I'm going to read, and again, a lot of what I'm reading is because people, including the media, don't believe it. And they don't believe us when we're out there telling the public what's going on. So I wanted to read directly from Planned Parenthood. Here we go. Queering Sex Ed is a new project at Planned Parenthood Toronto developing a sex ed resource with and for LGBTQ youth. The information and resources below have been created by the Queering Sex Education Youth Advisory Committee. And then they, they, they go on to ask why Queering Sex Ed, again, quoting directly from Planned Parenthood, you need to believe them when they're telling you what they want to do with your children. They go on and say, we recognize the need for an alternative sex education resource. It's not okay that gaps are being left in our sexual experiences and being ignored. There's so much opportunity in the queer world that includes queer sex. Penis and vagina is one kind of sex, but it's not the only kind of sex. I apologize for my words. Even the experts, and Planned Parenthood goes on to say this, even the experts don't all agree on the definition of what sexual activity is. They go on to say different people consider many different activities to be sex, but pretty much all definitions of sex include sexual intercourse, which means vaginal sex, which refers to a 
oral sex, I think God's turning off the microphone, oral sex, which is when uh, one person puts their mouth in another person's genitals. It should offend you. It should offend you. They want to teach this all the way down to elementary school. It goes on. How many of you are familiar with CECAS? Is the Information Education Council of the United States. They're the BFF of Planned Parenthood. They go on and they say what we those of us that have been in the battle for a lot of years have been, been trying to alert the public about what comprehensive sex ed is about. But this last year, Planned Parenthood and CECAS ripped the mask off what they've been doing and they went public with what their plans are. This is directly from CECAS. CECAS asserts that sexuality is a fundamental part of being human, one worthy of dignity and respect. We advocate for the rights of all people to accurate information, comprehensive sexuality education, and the full spectrum of sexual and reproductive health services. CECAS works to create a world that ensures social justice inclusive of sexual and reproductive rights. Our schools aren't supposed to be instruments of social justice. Students' health is absolutely not CECA's or Planned Parenthood's priority. Social change is their true goal, and that's what this bill is about. CECA's goes on to say that while sex education is a necessary sexual health tool, it can and should be so much more than that. With sex education, we have a golden opportunity to create a cultural shift tackling misinformation, shame, and stigma that create the basis for many of today's sexual and reproductive health rights and issues. And then they go on to say, like, reproductive justice, uh, dismantling white supremacy. They see sexualizing our kids and indoctrinating them as their golden opportunity. That is offensive and I say shame on you. And to any legislator, policymaker, school board member that is supporting this, I say shame on you. Sex education is no longer a one or two hour class about body changes, nutrition, health, exercise. It's about dismantling our values. It's about promoting sex, how to have sex. I said it before, what happens in California doesn't stay in California. And Minnesota schools are never going to be the same if this bill passes or the, a new one, and it will come up again, moves forward. And now I'm quoting directly from the Minnesota bill. It says you have to have a model program including written materials, curriculum resources, and training for instructors. Who do you think does the training for instructors? Planned Parenthood. Shame on you. So model, model programs from other states I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about so that you know what's going on. I'm going to give you and read some excerpts that are specifically from the most popular nationwide curriculums. I'm going to start with kin They're taken directly from what's schools are teaching. Kindergarten, this is your body. You have a right to know what different body parts are called. And then they go in to tell the kids to say the word out loud. Oh, let's all say penis. Penis. Again, desensitize, grooming. Explain to them that most people have a vulva or a penis, but some people's bodies can be different. Your body is exactly what's right for you. It's the idea that you choose your gender. Third grade, discuss the rainbow flag and what it represents, that it's the pride of gay and lesbian people. Our third graders, okay, I don't know about your kids, but there's, they're usually kind of picking their nose, punching each other. I mean, they're not really focused on the rainbow gay pride flag, nor should they be. More curriculum, fifth grade. 
Define sexual orientation and its most common categories. And then it goes on to tell the fifth graders, sometimes we will have these feelings for people who are our same gender. This is called being gay. Some gay women call themselves lesbians, and sometimes we might have feelings for all genders. This is called being bisexual. How many of you, when you were in elementary school, wanted to marry your teacher, marry your mom or dad, your best friend who happened to be the same gender? That is normal development. We are now going to be telling our kids that loving their best friend means they're gay. That is not what it means. It's natural development. So I'm going to go on and talk about um, a little bit more about the curriculum. And I want you guys have heard about the book that Planned Parenthood talks about. It's perfectly normal. And they're promoting it. Shame on you. This is for 10 years of age and older. The pictures in here are pornographic. And I was speaking with one of, the, one of your lawmakers, and here's one of the things that people don't know. Most of these pictures, if I was to leave it in a boardroom or a work environment and someone was to look at it, it'd be considered sexual harassment. If this was left in some sort of lunchroom where you work, the pictures would be considered sexual harassment. But the left is always ahead of us. And they have taken, and Minnesota is one of the states where they've taken exemptions for obscenity laws. And so although we have obscenity laws, California and Nevada are exempt as well, they're one of the 44, your public schools are exempt from obscenity laws. And that's how a lot of this stuff is getting in there with the graphic pictures. Shame on you if you support this. The curriculum that they are pushing, it seeks to erase everything our children have been taught at home about gender. It encourages teachers to stop referring to boys or girls and make reference to them as they or as one of the curriculum starts in sixth grade. Don't call them she. Call them a person, women, a person with a vulva. Oh. When did the feminists, which I'm a huge Phyllis Schlafly fan, Eagle Forum, the ultimate feminist she was, when did we want to start being referred to as our body parts? So are we supposed to, we're, these are the instructions from the curriculum. Please line up if you have a vulva here, and those of you that have a penis, line up here. That is the curriculum's instruction to the sixth great teacher. I'm reading directly from it. They also put down, a lot of people say, well, you know, people believe different things. But the curriculum goes further and it inserts digs at those of us that have the belief that you're born male or female. And it creates gender confusion. I'm going to quote again directly from, and this happens to be Advocates for Youth, sixth grade teacher script. Typically when a baby is born, they are identified as a boy or a girl based on their genitalia, penis or vulva. Unfortunately, that moment will probably determine how the people in that baby's life will interact with that child. Again, stigmatizes those of us that believe you're born male or female. They talk about your, your being assigned at birth. The doctor didn't just assign a gender at birth, he looked at your biology and your body parts and determined you're a boy or a girl. He didn't just say, oh, I've had a lot of girls today, the next two are going to be boys. It is determined by biology. Does that sound medically accurate, that it's your feelings that determine your gender? Not at all. So the, if we've talked about it's perfectly normal, and I've already read a lot of the obscene stuff, so I'm, I'm not going to read from that book. But now I'm going to go on to middle school. This is seventh and eighth graders. So these are 11, 12, 13, 14 year olds. This is again from a different curriculum. I'm covering several different curriculums. What is sex? Introduce today's session to the class by telling students they're going to discuss what oral, anal, and vaginal sex is. 
How do you protect yourself? With a condom or dental dam every time you have vaginal, anal, or oral sex. Applying lubricant to the outside of the condom also makes vaginal and anal sex more comfortable. We talk about medically accurate. There is no FDA approved condom for anal sex. And the reason there isn't is because it's not safe. And who do you think are gonna be the recipients of this new idea of having anal sex? It's gonna be our daughters. It's gonna be our daughters that are gonna be pressured into this, this new phenomenon called anal sex that they're promoting in all the curriculum. This is really nothing more than pornography that's wrapped up in a bow and called sex education. And they can talk about dental dams and they can talk about condoms all they want, but there is no condom for the heart, minds, and soul of our kids. Once they are exposed to this offensive visual information, we cannot get it back. It repeats over and over in their heads. <laughs> and I have to say, my husband often says, this, you know, this is nothing more than giving a kid, especially a boy, a 357 and saying, hey, don't shoot it, but here it is. That's what we're doing with this curriculum and with comprehensive sex ed. So parents, please don't be deceived into thinking that it's not happening in Minnesota or not coming here. And you're gonna hear some action items that will tell you what you can do and where, where you're gonna go from here. And I've committed, for whatever reason, I feel called to sex education. I didn't know it was a calling, but it's something I feel very called to. And I've committed, and I've let the board know, I will do whatever I need to to help this be stopped in Minnesota. I will come back and work with legislators. I will testify. I will work with their board. I am committed to making sure we stop this now and then we push it out of the school districts that have chosen to do this. No. I honestly thank you. I don't do it for the applause. It's the right thing. And I do have to say I am impressed with the legislators that showed up because often they don't want to talk about any social issue and they don't want to talk about controversial stuff because they don't want to be called names. This is a winning issue. Our kids and in introducing them to grooming and sexually explicit material as young as kindergarten is a winning issue. It's not a matter of right versus left, it's right versus wrong. And we need to come alongside them and stand with them as they fight on this. So I wanna encourage you to not let Planned Parenthood use your child as a golden opportunity. That's not what our children are. Don't let them strip away our kids' innocence and use them for cultural change with our tax dollars. There is no lobbyist for families, we are it. The moms and dads are who need to advocate for our kids, whether it's before the school board, the legislature. We aren't a big union. We're moms and dads who are busy going to church, running to soccer, you know, doing everything that families do. So at this point, they're gonna bring up someone who's gonna give you some action items. But I love uh, William Wilberforce. Anyone familiar with William Wilberforce? Okay, I'm a big Wilberforce fan. So I'm gonna leave with a quote, and I tend to do this if you watch some of my videos online, but I think it's powerful and worth saying. He says, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know. So thank you, and get out there and get active. Thank you, Karen. Wow, that was such a fabulous heads up. We're so grateful you came all this way. So as you've heard today, the ideology and agenda driving comprehensive sex education is a threat to the well-being of children. 
The Minnesota Department of Education assures parents that its curriculum is developmentally appropriate and medically accurate, quote unquote. Really, according to whose standards? Planned Parenthood? As we know, the opposition has been implementing their sexual revolution agenda for decades. Friends, we are the resistance to their revolution. The grassroots are ablaze through the great state of Minnesota. Many want to do something to counter the left's radical ideology and agenda, and have, and for which we are very, very grateful. You care about protecting the innocence of kids and showed up today. Thank you. You cared about protecting, you care about the culture in which children are growing up and showed up today, so thank you. You've gone door to door and have sounded the alarms with all those within your sphere of influence, and for that we're grateful as well. But we're just beginning and we have so much work to do. Now it's time to tell legislators, especially our senators, that there's much more to do. And the Department of Education that you want your children to learn the three R's, not the ideology that exposes children to sexual liberation, deviance, and gender confusion. And to let them know that you do not want your hard-earned tax dollars going to pay for programs, policies, and comprehensive sex education curricula that blatantly contradict and undermine your family's values and beliefs. <laughs> On behalf of the Minnesota Child Protection League, we thank you for your interest in and dedication to protecting kids. We greatly appreciate your support and look forward in working together in the months and years ahead to stop CSE, stop a CSE mandate in schools, dead in its tracks. Before I introduce today's last speaker who will wrap up our rally, I'd like to take this opportunity to personally thank you once again for being here and wish you each and every one of you a wonderful rest of your Sunday afternoon and may God bless each and every one of you as well. Thank you so much. Our wrap-up speaker is Michelle Lentz, president and founder of Minnesota Child Protection League Action. She educates and equips activists to protect children from exploitation, indoctrination, and violence. With over 25 years' experience in sales, marketing, and public relations, Michelle has proven her ability to make important issues understandable while moving people to action. Michelle is committed to creating strong families in Minnesota, and she and her husband James have nine adult children and six grandchildren. Michelle understands that undermining the physical, moral, and spiritual foundation of our children destroys families. Strong families are the foundation of our liberty in America. A broken society can only come through strong, moral, physical, and spiritually grounded families. Please join me in welcoming Michelle. Thank you. What? All right, learning how to use a mic today. Thank you, Cynthia, and thanks everybody for coming. Uh, it, it, you know, sometimes you, you plan events like this and, and then the night before you wonder, you know, if anybody will show up. Does anybody care about kids like we do? And, and really care about kids like we do. <laughs> Friends, the opposition said this bill will be back. However, if it doesn't come back this next session, that's your victory. That's you. That's what you did. You and us working together. 
But it won't stop there. You understand that, don't you, after all these speakers? This is not going away anytime soon, and we have to make it toxic for years to come. We at the Child Protection League aim to do just that, to get rid of it for now and to get rid of it for good. And guess what? We have a strategy to do that. This rally is phase one of that strategy, but we are on the march now. Are you with me? This issue crosses all demographics, all ages, all parties, all religions. Nobody wants their children to be sexualized. We have a winning message on this because we have the truth. All right, here's our strategy, and this is where you ne we need you because all of us together have to do these things. Listen to what is on our to-do list, so to speak, and ask yourself, what am I being called to do? Because you might not be called to do the same thing that your neighbor is called to do. So just listen for what is the calling for you, because it's all of us working together that's going to stop this. The first thing that we ask you to do is get on our email list. We don't send out a lot of emails, but we need to communicate with you and we need to hear from you. So go to cplaction.com, just sign up for our email updates, and uh, let's start there. Next, take the info cards that are on our tables around here, if there's any left, and hand out the information on CSE to your friends and neighbors. Thirdly, visit your legislators, even the ones who supported this comprehensive sex ed bill. Why do I say that? Because if you go to them and you say, look, this is non-negotiable, they, even if they're in a safe seat, will begin to get very nervous that they're going to lose their power if they continue to push this. Does that make sense to you? Then, go to your school boards and ask them, what kind of curriculum is here? Can I see it, by the way? Of course you can, it's the law. You get to review it. Ask for the opportunity to review it. And also, uh, document the correspondence between you and the school personnel and the school board, because sometimes they're not forthcoming but we're gonna get to the bottom of it, and if they're not, we're gonna find out. And then we're gonna help you to hold them accountable. Yeah. Lastly, lastly, and almost most important, we have to take this issue all the way to the elections. We will not tell you who to vote for because that's not what our organization does. We might tell you to go tell your legislator what you think. However, we will, we will record the votes that are taken and, taken and let you know how your legislators voted. And if they voted for this or legislation like this, then talk to those candidates and, and make this stopping of comprehensive sex ed one of your top three issues non-negotiable. If you're for that, I'm not for you, right? My friends, don't underestimate your power and the force of who we are when we are united. I guarantee you they are getting nervous. You have upset their plan. But now we aim to destroy it. They are going to try to divide us. Are we going to let them? No! You and I are strong together. We're a growing force. We're a force against the threat of those who have waged war for the hearts and minds of our children. Some days I know this battle is heavy. Some days I know that it seems like the culture war is, is not a winnable war. But I want you to know, this is not that day. Some days, 
We're going to get beat up. And some battles we're going to lose. But I want you to know that is not this day. This day, we fight. This day, we took this hill, we planted our flag here, and we said, not with my kids, you don't. So here we are, we're wrapping it up. Before I say farewell, Godspeed and safe travels, will you please join me in once again thanking Cindy Pugh, our campaign chair, Kelly Jansen, our, our campaign manager, all of our speakers, Karen England, Tamara Scott, Noah, who's here, Jeff, all of our legislators, please give Thank you.